TikTok clout stupidness, all three things that fit into the category of clout-hungry teenagers willing to put their own lives at risk for that juicy, juicy internet fame. Now, putting your own life at risk or freedom at risk for that matter, because yes, those individuals also break the law, is one thing, but putting other people's lives at risk is a completely different ball game. Spoiler alert, it sadly comes with the territory, all this remember for that juicy, juicy internet fame. Sticking to a similar theme then, and if there's one thing that annoys me, would be people who drive carelessly. There's no need for it, it can easily be avoided, just be thoughtful to others, it isn't hard. But I think what annoys me the most about careless driving is those that kill behind the wheel and the lenient sentence that gets handed down. Take the UK for example, and I'm pretty sure it's the same in America. If it wasn't intentional that you killed someone via a vehicle, and you just killed them on the basis of carelessly driving, you can expect to see a person out of jail within a few years. There's been cases of people not even doing any jail time. Yeah. I know, right? But even if the case ends up going to an appeal court to increase the sentence, you can expect maybe two or three years added on. And for you to be handed, say, a seven-year sentence for taking someone's life, I just don't think the crime matches the punishment. The police go around enforcing traffic laws all the time, but one of the most dangerous driving offences sees you spending a few years in prison, well that just doesn't make sense to me at all. Everything I've just spoke about ladies and gentlemen can describe this 18 year old teen, Noah Gale. At this current time, Noah's social media platforms have been swept from the internet and from all the research that I've done, I'm yet to come across any archived footage or tagged posts related to him. We'll assume then that he didn't have a large following but if anyone watching does know of his social media following size before being deleted by authorities i'd appreciate it if you could let me know down in the comment section below but no matter how big your following whether that be big or small it doesn't excuse the type of content Noah was allegedly creating. That content? Well, it's been alleged that Noah would post videos of himself on TikTok and Instagram asking people to guess how fast he was driving. And if someone guessed right, he said he would cash up them $25, roughly £20. Cash up, if you don't know, is an app where you can send money to people online. But it wasn't just any old car Noah was allegedly said to have been driving. No, it was a BMW M5 Competition Edition. Meaning on paper, I believe you could do speeds of up to 189 miles per hour. Some videos depicted him allegedly driving 181. What you'd need to be driving that speed for, I'll never know. Oh wait, yes I do. Clout. How could I forget? Yeah, let's drive 181 miles per hour and potentially kill people so I can build an online following because, ladies and gentlemen, that is the alleged facts of the case. Sadly, on the 27th of January 2022, six people would allegedly die at the hands of Noah and his BMW M5. We can't say for certain if Noah had been shooting a video at the time, that currently isn't clear. But what we do know is that on the 27th of January 2022, he'd been driving at 151 miles per hour down State Road 7 west of Delray Beach, Florida. Around the same time, six people, Malene Julcius, Fellaini Dio, Venice Persina, Ramiz Michael and Marie Louis, had been heading home after their shift at the Peru family farm. Sadly, they'd never make it there. At roughly 11pm, Noah had been driving 151 miles per hour when out of nowhere he struck a grey Nissan Rogue. Inside were those six people leaving work. He had hit the back of the vehicle with that much force, it had caused the car to flip multiple times before coming to a halt. It's thought that only the driver had wore a belt, so some of the people had actually been flung from the car out onto the road as the car was flipping. Emergency services soon rushed to the scene though, and sadly, five of the six occupants were pronounced dead. I'm guessing it would have been the driver who was still alive at that point. They had their seatbelt on. Noah somehow survived. He, along with the driver of the other car, were then taken to hospital. Sadly, the driver would die, but Noah survived the ordeal walking or should I say limping away with a minor ankle injury. At the emergency room a doctor asked how fast he was driving, his response according to the doctor above 120 miles per hour. A day after the crash a woman contacted the local sheriff's office and told an investigator she had taken screenshots of Noah's social media platforms where he allegedly recorded himself driving at high speeds. 
After a search warrant was executed to access his Instagram account, investigators found a video of him driving at 181 miles per hour, but believe it or not, an arrest wasn't made until the 6th of April months on. On that April date, he was charged with six counts of vehicular homicide, and although he was 17 at the time of the offence, he'll be facing those charges as an adult rather than a juvenile. We don't exactly know why it took police weeks to make an arrest, but I do believe it's because they were waiting for a toxicology report. That came back negative, by the way, for anyone wondering. I think they were trying to get the right charges before moving forward, but six people dead, you'd think they'd try and act quicker. Noah is currently being held on $300,000 bond, plus conditions of no driving. He's currently on house arrest until further notice. He's pled not guilty to the charges that were brought against him, and in those videos, his defense says that it wasn't him. So again, we don't exactly know if Noah had been shooting a video at the time of the crash. It doesn't make that clear, but given the alleged videos that were made previously, it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. And if it wasn't, social media would have definitely played a role in boosting his so-called confidence to want to continue to drive so recklessly. At any moment, he could have pulled his phone out to shoot a video. What should be noted as well is that police said there were no signs that Noah had even tried to break as he was coming closer to the SUV, nor did he break on impact. If I do get any updates coming from this situation though, as always, I will keep you guys posted on this one. For now though, give the video a like for more crime related content like this and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's been me, Ape Poncho, and I'll see you in the next one. He was driving a BMW M5 and there were no braking according to our investigators when they completed the investigation, so there was no marks of any braking. The uh, vehicle was traveling northbound and struck from behind and the impact was at 151 miles per hour. Did you suspect that it was on that crash? Did you have any I, no, sir. There was no, and the toxicology was not, did not show anything not on it. Yeah. We, we did all the investigation and didn't show any of it. Okay. Uh, high speed. Okay. You're welcome. Now, I understand that your goal in the January crash was over multiple times um, in things that you described with injuries to the suspect's head. I believe the suspect was not injured at the time. Uh, the people only, the second the vehicle that he struck, that there were six people in a Nissan Rogue. Uh, I believe three were ejected and the other three were in a vehicle had to be extricated. But the driver himself did not suffer any injuries. Major, could you confirm that the toxicology came back today? Is that what you guys were waiting for for Mr. Lopez? It's just not the toxicology report. The toxicology report is just to confirm suspicion of impairment, obviously, and it did. Uh, no, the sheriff actually from day one said, I need this expedited. So we actually had our scientists working late and on it from the minute that happened. So we did obtain it prior. However, it's just to submit the report for, prior, for the arrest warrant. It takes the paperwork, the crash reconstruction, the speed, everything put together, and then submit the toxicology report to get the state warrant, uh, the state arrest warrant from the state attorney's office, which we did.